back again. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn this circuit uh, into an Excel spreadsheet. So now what we're going to do is go to our start menu and open Microsoft Excel. It might be under your uh, all programs, Microsoft Office, and then uh, Excel, depending on how you have it installed on the computer. Um, so go ahead and open up Excel and we're going to start a new workbook. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a column for voltage, for current, for resistance, and for power. Because we might as well solve for all four of those values anytime we're solving for, for one of them. So go ahead and create a column for each of those values. Now I created a space between in this first column before I started typing in uh, col columns for each of those values we're going to be solving for. The reason for that is that we're going to put all of our resistance values in that blank column. So we'll go ahead and since this is the first resistor in the circuit on the positive terminal, we'll make a row for R4, resistor 4, and we're going to go ahead, These, since these two are in series, we'll go ahead and add, add their values together and make, call those RS1. So we have R6, R7, RS1. And then we have R5. And since these are in series, we'll, we'll have the values for R3, for R2, and we'll call this RS2 for series resistance 2. And then that's in series with the 270 ohm resistor. However, before we get to that, these are all in parallel. So we're going to call this branch because we have one parallel branch resistance total. And then we have a 270 ohm resistor in series with that. And that's R1. So after we calculate all of this, we're going to have one total resistance, which we'll call RT. And now we go ahead and plug our resistance values in. And once we get all of our resistor values in, then we'll start solving for these series values, this series value, this parallel value, and our resistance total. So let's go ahead and plug and chug our values into these spaces in the resistance column. So R4 is 1K, we'll call that 1000 ohms. R6 is 330 ohms. R7 is 150 ohms, and we'll go ahead and skip the series resistance now because we'll go back and do those. R5 is 470 ohms. R3 is 560 ohms. R2 is 680 ohms, and we'll go ahead and skip RS2 for now also. We'll skip branch also because that's the total parallel resistance, and we'll go ahead and put in 270 ohms for R1. Now we're going to go back and solve for our series resistances. Now, when resistors are in series, we'll agree that we add the values together because they are seen as one resistance when they're in series. Now, how do we know they're in series? Well, if it's in parallel, basically it's touching two different terminals. If it's in series, it's only touching one. So if that's confusing for you, just hold, hold on to that. But since we know that voltage is going to be divided, he, between here, here, and here, even though it's all the same voltage drop, we see that in a series, a series part of a parallel branch, the voltage is still divided, even though it's one total voltage drop across the whole thing.
So we're gonna go ahead and add those together under our S1. So when you wanna start a formula in a blank cell, you hit the equal sign, that tells Excel that you're about to input a formula. Then we're gonna click the value for R6, which is the first one we're gonna be adding and it's gonna highlight it. Now you hit the plus sign to tell Excel that you're going to add the value of cell D3 to the value of cell D4 and hit enter. Now this is going to give, give us a series resistance of 480 ohms. Now I went ahead and clicked over here on this five to highlight the that line and I'm going to go ahead and make it bold by hitting control B. Now we go back over here and we see that R3 and R2 are also in series. So we're going to call these two RS1. RS1. Oh, I'm sorry, RS2 over here, so we hit the equal sign to tell Excel we're going to insert a formula. Click the first value we want to add, plus sign, second value, enter. Now, I'm going to highlight that row by hitting 9 and make it bold. I'm going to go ahead and save this also. Now, we know that we have a parallel branch with three different values. So what we're going to do, we know that it's a reciprocal formula for figuring out parallel resistances. So what we're going to do to add those up, we need to add up R8, I'm sorry, RS1, uh, R5, and RS2 to get this equivalent parallel resistance. So what I'm gonna, we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the equals key to tell Excel that we're inserting a formula. And we're gonna have one divided by. And then put a parentheses to tell Excel that we're going to divide, take the reciprocal of anything that's entered into the parentheses. So we know that when we're adding parallel branches together, we're adding the conductances. Remember we learned that in, like, in a few chapters back? So we're going to put 1 divided by the quantity, 1 divided by, and take our first parallel resistance, add it to our second parallel resistance, and add it to our third parallel resistance. And then we're going to close the parentheses and hit enter, and voila. We have about uh, 200 ohms, about 200 ohms total, which is slightly different there. And now that we have 200 ohms for our equivalent branch resistance, we can go ahead and add that to R4 and treat these all as one series resistance. So we hit the equals key, add the 1K, ohm resistor, which is the first one in series, add it to our total parallel resistance, which is the second one, and then add it to the third series resistance. Okay, plus branch resistance plus one, and hit enter, and that gives us our total equivalent resistance. It's slightly different here because of uh, because Excel is doing a much more accurate calculation than I was doing over here when I inputted these values for the resistors. So now that we have our final series resistance, we can figure out the total current. And how do we do that? Well, we know that we have a 24 volt drop and a 1467 ohm load. So we'll go ahead and put our 24 volts here under the voltage column. And 
and then we can go to figure out our current. Well, we know that voltage equals amperage times resistance. So voltage divided by resistance will equal amperage. So we're going to hit the equals key, click our voltage, slash, and our resistance, which will give us our total current. Now, we know that we're going to have a voltage drop In a series circuit, current is constant, but we're going to have a voltage drop. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our total current and we're going to put it in this cell with resistor 4. And how I like to do that is I like to just hit the equals key and then click on the cell that has the total current. Boom. Now to figure out the voltage drop, across the, across resistor 1, we just multiply the current by the resistance. And to multiply, you hit the, star, the asterisk key and then click on your resistance value. And that gives us the voltage drop across resistor 1, which we already had figured out was 16 volts, right? Because then we have about 8, about 8 volts left over, or... Seven point seven. See? So go back we go back over to Excel and now we know that we are going to have a uh, volt voltage is going to be constant across this whole branch. So what now what we do is we're going to, since the voltage drop across all of this Now, we're going to go, we're going to do, do something slightly differently at this point to figure out some, some of the other.